Hey everyone, in this video we are going to build a modern landing page with some loading animations using Next.js, Tailwind CSS, and Framer Motion. So as you can see in this demo, let me just refresh the page. Uh, we'll work on a few different types of animations on the load for the different elements, so for the text, for the video, so everything on the page, uh, including this really cool animation for the banner text. To get started, go ahead and download the starter code using the link in the description below and make sure to run npm install to get all the dependencies including framer motion and let's get into it all right so here on the screen on the left i have a window open to localhost 3000 which is currently blank because we don't have the project running and on the right i have the starter code opened up in vs code so just quickly going through what's in here it's, it's pretty bare bones what's in the file right now so inside of the index.tsx file which is the kind of main file for the page. You can see it's pretty empty. There's lots of red squiggles right now because we need to install dependencies, which we'll do in a second. Um, but pretty bare bones here with just a head, um, which is the website title. Other than that, there is the one key asset for the file, which is the hero video file, which is already here included. Uh, and then, yeah, everything else is pretty much just the boil boilerplate code that comes with a new Next.js app. With Tailwind. So first thing we'll do, as I mentioned, open up a terminal here within VS Code and just run npm install. And so that will have installed everything. And we'll see now when we click back in, all the errors go away, go away, which is great. And I'm just going to go ahead and run the project. So npm npm run dev, which will kick it off on port 3000. And now if I go back to my Chrome browser refresh, I have the bare bones website up and running landing page animation with fair motion. Very exciting website indeed, but let's, let's make it a little bit more interesting. So to start with, we will first start with just building the, the page content itself. So all of the kind of HTML and the CSS and styling, no, not really CSS, I guess, because we're using Tailwind. Uh, and then after that, we'll get into the animation. So first, let's let's build out the page structure. To do that, uh, let's go. We'll we'll start here in the next.tsx, and we'll start building out some of the content. So let's start with the text at the very top. So I will go and replace this div, and let's make a main tag. And within this main tag, we'll have a h1. And this H1, for now, we'll just say helper robots for a better every day. And then inside of that the main, we'll also add a div for the second text content. And we'll get into later on why so we kind of do it like this. Um, and actually, let me just go ahead and copy the text in, save some time. So now we have the actual text content here. Uh, doesn't look very interesting, so let's let's change that by adding some styling. And for that, we are going to use Tailwind to style this. For those of you who don't know, Tailwind is a way to essentially write your CSX using CSS using utility class names instead of actually having to write out the CSS. So, for example, in this H1, if I add a class name here. I can say, for example, I want to set the text size to be 8XL. I want this to be bold. Uh, I want the, let's say the width of this, fixed width of this H1 to be 40 rem, exactly. I'm gonna adjust the leading here and also the tracking as well. Just to make it look a little bit better. If I hit save, you can see it kind of applied all the styles here. Uh, which is starting to look a little bit better. You'll notice we added the width here, uh, 40 rem. This is to essentially make sure that the H1 doesn't take up the full width of the container. More of a stylistic choice that we'll see kind of later on why we do this. So that's the H1. And then for the div, uh, we can add as well a little bit of styling. So set the font size to text base, which is just 16 pixels or one rem. And I'm just going to adjust the leading here as well to make it a little bit better. So you can see it didn't really do anything actually, uh, which is totally fine, uh, but it will come in handy down the road. Now, the one thing right now that you'll notice is the text is kind of sitting on right on top of each other. And so we'll want to adjust this a little bit. So for that, 
we're going to go to the main element that we create here. We're going to add some class names here. So we're specifically going to use a display grid to help sort this all out visually. So to do that, I'll just say grid. And then to set the grid columns here, Tailwind has some predefined utility classes, as you can see here uh, for saying a certain number of columns. So for example, grid calls two will set the grid to have two columns with equal width, which might come in handy, but you can always override these with kind of the traditional column width setting. So for example, I just open score brackets and I'll say, well, I want to make the first bracket, uh, sorry, the first column three times the value of the second column. So three FR, one FR is the two column widths. So first column will be 75% of the width, the second column will be 25%. And then finally, I'll just set a padding, a vertical padding as well to give it some spacing. And boom, you can see we've already kind of laid it out in the grid. And now it starts to look a little bit better. Uh, the one thing is this text on the right is kind of floating right now to the very top of kind of this row of this grid. I want to push it down to the bottom. So for that, I'll go back to the div. Now add a self n, and then it will push it to the bottom of kind of its grid cell if you can think about it like that. Cool, so that's the text. One thing I forgot to add actually first is we also want a little nav bar at the very top, which can come in handy. So for that, we're going to actually just make it in a separate component. So I'm gonna make a new folder actually in the project. I'll make a folder called components. And within that, I will make the file. So in this case, navbar.tsx, new file. Uh, the Emmet shortcut I use to generate new components is RAFCE, and it generates a nice React functional component with already the title filled in, sorry, name of the component filled in with the name of the file, so navbar. If I hit save, I can just quickly link it. So if I go back here above this main, I will autocomplete the navbar. It will automatically import it for me as well. Hit save, and now this navbar component, as you can see, it's a very boring navbar, which we'll change in a second, but it is being pulled in appropriately. So onto the navbar. This will be a pretty simple one. We'll keep it pretty simple and actually doesn't won't have really much functionality, but we'll just return a first a nav component. When that nav component, I will have an h2 tag. I'm going to do this in a slightly different way than you would maybe typically do it. So I'm gonna set two different spans for the text and I'll talk about why in a second. And then we'll then have a second div, which will just be a standalone menu. This menu is just gonna say menu and won't actually do anything in this project just to keep things simple. So we have the content, let's style. So let's start with the nav, again, using Tailwind classes. Here I'm gonna use display flex. I'll apply a justify between to actually space these things out horizontally. Item center to vertically center the project, the elements, and then I'll add a vertical padding. So you can see here, spread out nicely. It's a little bit from the top as well, spaced out from the top. Going to the H3 tag, why exactly did we do the span? Well, it's because, again, from a stylistic perspective, I want to stack the robots in the code vertically. And so to do that on the h3 tag, I will actually make the h3 itself a flex and flex column. And if you'll see that now stacks it. And then some other file styling I'll do, I'll make it font black here, so really heavy. Text for Excel make the letter spacing a little bit tighter. With that, we have a really, a little bit more stylized logo, let's say, in replacement of an actual uh, font uh, or, or an actual image. So not too bad as a placeholder. Uh, and I actually misspoke. So the leading is for line height, not for letter spacing. So we have that text all sorted. Now, the one thing before we move on that you'll notice is everything right now is very much to the edge of this of, of the page. And so let's add a little bit of spacing here. So for that, I'm just going to go to the div at the very top, the, the ultimate parent div. I'm just going to add a couple of simple things here. So first, I'm just going to say the min height of this div is just going to be the screen height. And then I'm going to add a horizontal padding of value of 12. And you can see it kind of brings it in and starts to look a little bit nice. I'm also going to add a background color here. So you'll notice as I start to auto complete this, it comes up with this BG cream. Now cream is actually not a default value in Tailwind. It has a lot of kind of preset color palettes, which are already always really nice. But if you want to ever use a custom color and still use it with Tailwind, you'll actually notice if I go to the tailwind.config.js, you'll notice a section here where I can extend the theme. And you can see what I did here is I extended the colors and added this color of cream with the specific hex value. 
And so this is a really cool way to still use the power of Tailwind, but extend it a little bit with your own custom styling and themes and, and design systems as well. And this is already starting to look much better. The last element that we're missing from a content perspective is the video. So for that, I'm gonna go underneath the main section, I'm going to add a video tag. Within this video tag, I'm going to add a source tag. And the source tag, I'll set the source to be equal to backslash assets and then our hero video file mp4. Set the type to be video mp4. You can see the video is already here, but you'll notice it's frozen. That's because we need to give it some properties on the video tag. So specifically, you need to say, I want this to loop. I want it to autoplay when the page loads. I want it to be muted and play in line. If I hit save and if I refresh the page, there we go. Now it's just playing uh, nicely here on the left. Now, quick thing I will just talk about here is why I used a separate source tag inside the video tag instead of just putting the source directly in the video tag. That will work. Like you can put the source in the video tag, it will so load, it will, for purpose of this project, do the same thing. But putting a separate source tag in can be really helpful, especially when you have really large video files and also trying to maximize browser compatibility. So typically what you do is you wouldn't just have one source. You would have multiple sources for the same video file, perhaps, you know, versions with different compression types for, let's say, desktops versus mobile screens or the same video in different file formats, depending on browser compatibility. And then the video tag will kind of automatically pick the best one based on the situation. And so it can make it kind of more performant and again, more compatible. Uh, and so this is just good hygiene in terms of structure for a video tag. So that's why I'm just gonna do that here. Great, so then the final piece of content we need is a very simple footer underneath this. And so I'm just gonna put this in a standard footer tag. And here I'm just gonna put a simple paragraph in. I will. Go ahead and just copy some simple text here. Save. Okay, great. It shows up here on the left. But now let's make it look a tiny bit better. So add some classes here. So make it display flex, justify center to center it. Let's see, it centered it. I'm going to make the text a little bit smaller and also apply a sort of tone of gray here uh, that comes with Tailwind called Zinc. And I'm just going to add a little bit of vertical padding as well. So then I've saved all that. You can see the styling has now been applied to the footer. I think this looks pretty good. And so now we have all of the actual content here for the page. So now we can jump into the animations. I'm realizing this video is getting pretty long. So we're going to tackle building the animations using frame or motion in part two of this project, which I'll link on the screen right now. I'll see you all there.